There was a lot of information given today on a RuneScape 3 livestream about the new Glacor front that will be released the 31st of August and will be the second front of the Elder God of Wars dungeon. So let's talk about some of the information given during the livestream. So let's first talk about the Glacor Slayer monsters. This is going to be like a snow area which looks by the way amazing and there's going to be apparently two different type of Slayer monsters and both of them are Glacors. One smaller version which is uh, a melee Glacor that requires 84 Slayer to kill that is said to be fairly weak but there is going to be a lot of them and then there are also normal Glacors that you can kill actually without the quest requirement ritual of the Majorat. And these creatures will be dropping uh, various different things but most importantly Glacor remnants. They are used to craft items related to the front. Knowing that there's going to be a lot of small and weak enemies that you can farm, there's actually a new god ability, the Helvir one, which actually is a mushroom that explodes and does a bunch of damage. So that sounds very good. If you're bringing probably like mechanized chinchompas with ranged, and then you're just cleaving down those small glacers, that with the mushroom ability is going to be some pretty powerful combination. They also alluded to that these creatures will be nice for clue hunters and what it seemed like from the chat they all pretty much expected it to be elite clue scrolls. I'm not really doing a lot of clues these days but I'm assuming that they are pretty hard to get your hands on and if they would only hint a small thing about clue scroll hunters will enjoy this that is most likely what it's going to be good for. So now let's get into the boss and this is the super interesting part of the whole livestream for me at least. It is a scaling difficulty boss which is probably one of the first ones we've ever had. Of course you can count maybe Telos with the enraged type thing a scaling boss but this is to a whole new level. So first off you will be able to enter like a waiting area with a bunch of different mages that is kind of relevant to the lore and they all have different mechanics they're basically disabling from the boss and uh, you can actually remove all of the mechanics and go in and just afk the boss and on stream they even joked about it being easier than afk and kbd and you can kill it that way and you're probably going to be able to easily get it and i was just thinking this might be very good for farming kc if you want to get a pet but uh, we will have to see if that is actually how it works. But if you want to activate the mechanics, you gradually get better rewards for the boss. And there is a total of five mechanics that you can activate. Also, there is uh, one more thing. The Asandra Mage actually activates hard mode, but you cannot access hard mode until you've got a five mechanics solo kill on the boss. You will be able to mass this boss, which was kind of interesting, but you will not be able to unlock hard mode unless you solo the boss with all the mechanics activated. But let's talk about the five mechanics and there's actually a sixth mechanic that is not actually a mechanic. They were calling it creeping eyes. It's basically just an indicator that something is about to happen. So when you see this, it is a sign that one of the mechanics you have activated is about to occur. So the first mechanic is minions. There will be four minions, two melee, two magic, and they will shield the boss from taking damage, just like a normal Glacor. But when you kill them, they actually drop something that damages the boss. So it is very incentivized to kill the minions and then get that damage onto the boss. Then we have Flurry. The boss attacks around 40% faster, according to them on the live stream. That is, of course, probably just an estimate. But it will attack with different styles. This is a prayer flick mechanic, 100%. And they also actually mentioned that they made prayer flicks 15% stronger on this boss to reward the player doing it. So uh, it is not 50% without an amulet of souls, it is going to be 65%. And it is a good mechanic to train prayer flicking and you can actually only activate this mechanic, disable everything else if you want to practice it. We have the Pillar of Ice ability, which is a very slow moving pillar that does damage and drains your prayer if it hits you. This kind of reminds me of the Ma Rex Matriarch, that is the blue one to the far right, I don't remember the name of it, but it also spawns one of these pillars that you have to move out of, but that's basically the whole mechanic. 
The next ability is Frost Cannon, and the more abilities you have activated during the fight overall, by the way, the more damage each ability will do. So if you only have one ability on, for example, you have only Frost Cannon on, the damage you will take from this is probably going to be pretty minor, but if you have all the different abilities activated, this is supposed to one-shot you. And this is to incentivize you using defensive abilities, for example, Resonance in it, or using Barricade or something like that to avoid the damage. So the last ability, they actually didn't show some of the mechanics and they were just talking about them and this is one of them. They said that the boss is going to trap you, it's going to fall on you basically and trap you and it's going to hold you in its arms and you have to destroy the arms and then break free before you die and you will take more and more damage over time. They said that 10 seconds is the best spot you want to be in if you can get out. Get out. But 20 seconds is survivable, so I'm going to assume that at 20 seconds you probably take a lot of damage every second, and at 10 seconds is probably where you're starting to take a lot of damage. So as I was talking about earlier, the boss has a hard mode, but you have to have solo the boss with all mechanics activated to be able to unlock it. And the boss in hard mode actually has an enraged mechanic, just like Telos. It starts at 0% and it goes all the way to 4000% exactly like Telos. Hard mode is actually only soluble because they want you to be able to progress that on your own, just like Telos as well. They said that they wanted the boss to be on normal mode as easy as a boss could possibly be, because this is going to be like a tutorial boss that can go all the way up to the highest difficulty in the whole game on hard mode, 4000% enrage. And I think that what they've planned for this boss seems like it is going to reach that goal. A very big thing that I was very happy to hear was that on normal mode, it is actually safe deaths. It is kind of funny how after the RS guy made a video on death costs ruining the game, they actually made that the next boss that was released has completely free deaths on normal mode, but on hard mode you cannot teleport out and you will be sent to death's office if you do die. So now let's talk about the rewards before we end the video. There is going to be Glaco Remnants that is dropped from the boss. Of course, the higher difficulty you do, the more they will drop. And it is basically a crafting item that, by the way, is also dropped from the slave creatures, but of course, most likely has a very low amount. What these are used for is kind of unclear, except for the fact that you will be crafting these into weapons and maybe even the scripture of when, which is a scripture that is going to be released with this front as well, like the scripture of Jazz. So it's going to be a pocket slot item most likely, but we really don't have any information about it yet. But what we do have information about is that you will be able to craft tier 85 weapons and you can do this from the normal boss with the Glaco Remnants. Then from hard mode, you will be able to unlock a frozen core of Lin, I think they called it. And if you used it on the tier 85 weapons, you upgrade them to tier 95. And they are actually a pair. Both the tier 95 and the 85 is having a set bonus. So if you wear both of them at the same time, they most likely will be very strong. Even at tier 85 with a set bonus that gives a decent bonus, that sounds like it might even be able to compete with tier 90s. There's definitely going to be more rewards than this, but they didn't go into it just yet. But uh, in one week, they are going to post a update blog on the RuneScape website with most likely all the rewards in it. So that will be very interesting to see. But I think so far the weapons look amazing and I really want to get them on my Iron Man because I have been lacking melee weapons for a long time and this seems like a very good opportunity to get them. Now also for the last thing, the Pontifex Ring that has a bonus for the Karapak boss that makes you immune to the stun effect he does. It is going to get an upgrade for this boss as well. We don't know what it's going to be, but it's probably going to be something similar for this boss. Well, so what do I think about this boss personally? Well, I think we will have to see on the first day when it's released, but I think that they are actually taking RuneScape PVMing into the right direction. They know that it is a very hard thing to get into, and the very experienced players need more and more challenging things, so they just added both of them into one boss. I mean, using defensives, prayer flicking, all these different things can be very difficult with how RuneScape PVMing works if you're new to it, but if if you've done it for a while, it gets pretty ridiculous how easy some of the bosses are. For example, Raksha, if you're very good at prey flicking using defensives, it is a super easy boss. But for someone like me, it is 
pretty difficult and it takes a lot of time to get used to it and uh, when you do eventually get used to it yeah it gets pretty easy and you don't even barely need any food anymore but i think learning people how the mechanics work in a very controlled environment as they said basically you can turn down the boss to only one mechanic and practice that over and over and over I think that's a very good way to get people into PVMing and also removing the death cost from normal mode is definitely the way to go. But we will have to see how this turns out on the release. I will definitely be making a guide for the boss as well as maybe a loot video, we will see how it goes. But I will definitely be enjoying the boss regardless and the content looks amazing. So hope you guys did enjoy this update video on the content and uh, yeah, let's experience it together on the 31st of August.